CNT 125, Chapter 12, we're on the section on power management. Uh, power surges, or power faults, if you will, can cause serious damage to equipment. Um, can also be frustrating to source of your network problems that you're having. So we need to know a little bit about electricity, electrical circuits, if you will, uh, so we can manage our electricity and our electricity usage in our, our network and our equipment. So a little bit of background ACDC. Hopefully you remember some of these concepts back from, you know, uh, general science, if you will. Um, light charges are going to repel each other. Uh, so negative is going to repel negative, positive is going to repel positive. But unlike charges will attract each other. A positive charge and negative charge will, will attract each other. That is a principle we should remember. Another principle we should remember, as I move electricity, electrical current through a wire, um, like, like I'm moving wire through a, a, a battery to a, a wire with a nail through it, that's going to produce a magnetic field. The nail is going to concentrate that magnetic field and allow you to make a little electromagnet to pick up paper clips. So any kind of electricity moving through a wire or coil produces a magnetic field. The opposite a magnetic field moving by a coil of wire induces, produces electricity flowing through a wire. So as I move a magnet through a coil of wire, it's going to grab the electrons in the wire and move them. Um, these are some fundamental concepts you should hopefully remember back from general science. Now, with DC direct current, electrons flow at a steady rate in one direction, typically negative to positive. Um, a battery is going to, uh, you have a, a negative pole here, it's going to push the electrons away, and then as it moves through here, the positive pole is going to track those negative electrons in, so I get a direct current flow. That's your DC, that's your battery power, uh, direct current. Meanwhile, alternating current, electrons are going to flow in one direction for a short time, stop, turn around, and move the other way, and they're going to alternate back and forth. This is how your power company um, and your generators produce electricity. Um, so the, the electricity coming out of a wall out in your house is AC alternating current. How that gets produced is you literally have a magnet that starts spinning, and as the, the pole of the magnet comes around a coil of wire, that magnet, magnetic field grabs a hold of the electrons in the wire and starts moving them through the wire. As that magnetic pole moves away and the other magnetic pole comes into play, it grabs the electrons and throws them the other way because you have your north and south pole are opposite, you know, uh, opposite polarity, if you will. So as the magnet moves one way by the coil, it, it pushes electrons one way. As the other end comes around, it pulls the electrons the other way. So you start getting electrons going one way, stopping, turn around, going the other way. That is alternating current. That is how the power for your house is generated, by literally moving a coil of wire by magnets. This is how your hydroelectric plants generate power. The, the water pushes a turbine, think of it like a fan blade, and that continually moves the magnets by coils of wire, or coils of wire by magnets, either way. Um, and that's how you're going to generate power. That's how a wind generator works is too. The wind spins the propeller, the blades, and it turns and, and the coil of wire moves by the magnets or the magnets move by the coil of wire. This is how nuclear power or coal power works as well. Uh, the nuclear reaction heats water, turns it into steam. The steam spins the turbine, which connects to a generator and generates power. This is how your, your power for your house is generated. Uh, back in time, there was a AC-DC uh, uh, competition, if you will, so to speak. DC, Edison was a proponent of DC and thought that was the way things should get powered. Um, Nikola Tesla was a proponent of AC. Uh, and we know how it ended. Uh, Nikola Tesla is the one that generated the, the power the way that we use for our houses. And Niagara Falls is key because... Um, there's, there's actually, if you go to Niagara Falls, there's a monument there to Nikola Tesla, and there's, there's me with my little nerd picture with Nikola Tesla monument. The reason being, Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla built the first hydroelectric plant there in 1895 uh, to produce power, and produce power using these concepts of moving coil of wire by magnets or moving magnets by coils of wire. So all of those are key principles for generating power. Some other things we need to be aware of is there's three values we talk about when we talk about uh, electricity. Voltage, current, and resistance. Uh, 
voltage is your electrical pressure. A battery has a small amount of pressure, a small number of electrons that's moving, so it's producing a, a very weak push, if you will, very weak pressure. Meanwhile, your wall outlet coming, you know, from the power company has a lot of electrons coming out, so it has a lot of push or a lot of pressure that can put on a circuit. Uh, so a battery might be, you know, one up to like 12 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, that sort of thing. Meanwhile, a wall outlet can be 120 volts or over in Europe can be 220, 230 volts. Uh, so a lot of electrical pressure coming out of your outlets. Current is the rate of electron flow. How many electrons are moving per time? So think of this almost as like standing in a creek or a river. If I stand in a small creek, I don't have many gallons of water moving by per time. Whereas I'm standing in a river like the Susquehanna, I have many thousands of gallons of water moving by per time. Um, so obviously the Susquehanna would have a greater rate of flow than a little teeny creek in your neighborhood. Uh, the unit of measure of current flow is amps or amperes. Um, so a, a AA battery would have milliamps, thousands of thousandth of an amp, whereas the uh, uh, you know a hair dryer might use five amps or a box fan might be 1.5 amps uh, current flow. How much current is flowing? Resistance is the reduction of electron flow, uh, kind of constricting my electron flow. This can be caused by a wire or device using the electricity. Uh, the typical result then is heat. So you think about of a uh, running a sweeper or a power drill, when you hold the cord after you use it a while, the cord gets warm. That's because of the resistance in the wire. Uh, the unit of measure of resistance is ohms. Uh, hair dryer uses maybe 5 amps of current flow, offering resistance of like 24 ohms. Um, meanwhile, box fam might use 1.5 amps of current flow and offering resistance of about 80 ohms. Okay. There's a relationship between the, the three, voltage, current, resistance, and <laughs> voltage is the pressure. I love this little picture. Voltage is the pressure pushing the electrons through the wire, and, and ohms is the resistance that's constricting the electrical flow. Um, so there's your relationship. And this was all figured out by George Ohm, hence the name Ohm, Ohm for our resistance measurement. He figured out this relationship and put it in this formula here, a little formula uh, chart, if you will. And it's actually a candy little doodad. Uh, you can use this by saying up top E equals, and then bottom down here, I times R. That is, that's how you can calculate voltage. Over here, current, I equals E divided by R. That would, uh, that would give you the amount of current flowing. And over here, resistance, R equals E divided by I. That will allow you to calculate the resistance in your circuit. This is one of those things to be aware of because it is sometimes handy to be able to calculate particular values. And there's a relationship between all three. Hence, this right here, that relationship, here's the math behind that relationship. So just be aware of that. Now, some other things to be aware of. A power converter is we can change the form of electrical energy in some ways through inverters, rectifiers, transformers, and regulators. So let's take a peek at these real quickly. An inverter is something can change DC electricity, plugging into your uh, you know, utility a port in your car. Um, I, as I plug this into my car, that's DC power. This inverter here can produce AC power. That's what the inverter can do. A rectifier, like your power supply on your computer, can take AC and generate DC, or the laptop charger that you have. AC coming out of the wall can rectify that into DC usage, or DC power for charging the battery in your in your laptop. Transformer can chase Decepticons. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, how did that get in there? Oops. Transformers can change the voltage of AC uh, by either stepping it up or stepping it down. Uh, if you have electrical wiring in your neighborhood that is above ground, up on telephone poles, these right here are transformers that take the voltage on the wires that is a very high voltage and drops it down, steps it down to voltage that you can use in your house, like 220 volts or 110. Meanwhile, if you have a neighborhood that has uh, electrical wiring underground, these boxes here are the transformers that are going to step the high voltage coming across these lines, the electrical lines, utility lines, down to a voltage level you can use in your house. Um, so that's, that's the above ground and below ground, that's what you would see. Uh, voltage, regulate, re, re, ooh, voltage regulator maintains a constant voltage level for AC or DC, and it's going to smooth out the, 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 the irregularities of that voltage level. This brings us to the power flaws. So all of those things we mentioned are kind of some background to understand these and how to respond to these. 
Power flaws that can damage your equipment can be things like surges, noise, brownouts, or blackouts. Um, a surge is a momentary increase in voltage due to a couple different things. Lightning strikes, solar flares, electrical problems, etc. Things like surge protectors or here's a larger surge protector with a batter unit in can help basically clamp down that spike that comes through, that surge that comes through, and clamp it down and send it to ground or get rid of it or burn it up or use it, I should say, use it up uh, through resistance so it does not get passed onto your equipment. Noise, fluctuations in voltage level caused by other devices on the network or EMI. Uh, things like voltage regulators here can help smooth that out. Um, and things like your, if you use a UPS unit, uh, the UPS unit can smooth that out as well. Um, kind of like filter that out so it does not get to your equipment. <coughs> Brownout. As a momentary decrease in voltage, also known as like a sag. This can happen in, I, I think, of the summertime when everybody starts putting on air conditioners. When you have that hot, humid day, everybody starts putting on air conditioners, and everybody's using more electricity than normal. It can cause a drain on the electrical system. Well, that temporary slump could be enough that your devices literally power off. Your sensitive electrical devices power off. You know, the light bulbs in your house can dim a little bit, but your computers, when they drop a little bit, might shut off. So the, the brownouts can be handled with using a UPS. Um, the UPS, the battery makes up the difference and keeps your device powered um, and, and, and keeps your device powered at the voltage level it needs. A blackout is a complete loss of power. Um, and that can happen when you have a storm. You know, power, uh, a tree comes down a power line, that kind of thing. Um, a UPS unit a battery backup unit can keep things running for a period of time, um, might be just minutes or a half hour kind of thing, and then generators can be there for a prolonged outage. Uh, if you have just a short outage because you have you know a lightning strike and things kind of shut off and come back on, the battery can keep things afloat and running until the power is restored. Um, if it's a longer duration, the that these battery units give you time for the generator to kick on and bring power on for the building. That brings us to a power distribution unit. Uh, this is basically what you would think of as a power strip in a rack, but this power unit does a little bit more. Um, this gives you a number of outlets, but can also monitor the electrical flow and even give you indications if there's power issues. Uh, a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply, uh, this we mentioned a couple times a little bit ago, can help prevent those unwanted fluctuations, either high or low values, um, in, in, in the electrical power coming to your equipment. Here's one that you might use for home. Here's one you might use for home. This is might, might be the one you have bolted in your equipment rack. These are the one, very similar ones we have bolted in our equipment racks in our lab room. Um, and here shows you kind of the arrangement of the, the power outlet here coming through a UPS into a power distribution unit, typical arrangement of. There are two types of UPS units, a standby and an online. A standby is there. It's just waiting for the power to go out and then the battery kicks in. So it literally does a mini switchover uh, from the power running normally. And then when the power, when it senses these signals lost, it the battery kicks in. So it's a mini, mini, mini switchover. Uh, most of your homeowner UPS units will do that. Um, and usually it works okay. It usually works okay um, because it, it senses it and switches over very quickly. The other style is an online, and these are usually more expensive. This is the kind, this almost looks identical to what we have bolted in our lab room, uh, in our, our, our server cabinet in our lab room. The online, um, literally the power is charging the battery all the time, and then the power is being fed from the battery to your devices. Um, so it's kind of like your, your laptop charger, if you will. When I have it plugged in, it's charging the battery in the laptop. When I unplug it, it stops charging the battery but your laptop still runs. It's that kind of idea. It's continually operating from battery power. Um, those are usually a little more expensive, but those are ones that don't have that switch over time. So to decide what you need, um, you need to do a little bit of calculation, and there's utilities to help you with this, to calculate how long do you need to run for and how much equipment is plugged in. And there are you, uh, companies out there like APC and so forth that have utilities to help you figure out how many devices I have plugged in, how long I need them to run for so I can bring generators online, and it'll calculate how big of a UPS you need to, to support the equipment in your rack. So there's utilities to help you with that.